What's going on everybody? It's by Key here at the job, here at the gig. I had a little bit of free time between customers and I wanted to do a quick video uh, talking about the Bears end of season press conference, you know, with GM Ryan Poles, coach Matt Eberflus, and talk a little bit about um, this uh, Mike Tannenbaum scenario that he was talking about with trading Justin Fields and drafting Bryce Young you know, one overall and, you know, getting a bunch of picks for Justin Fields, all that stuff. Trust me, y'all, Justin Fields ain't going nowhere. Justin Fields is the quarterback of the future. We all know that. Um, it is what it is. I'm going to get to why Matt, uh, that uh, Tannenbaum's scenario does make sense. What he's saying does make sense, but I have a caveat to it. There's a caveat, there's a big time caveat to what he's saying that I'm gonna get into. But I quickly wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, end of season presser first. Um, heard a lot of good things from uh, both Coach Flus and GM Ryan Poles, mainly Ryan Poles, uh, Poles talked the most. Um, I love the direction that GM Pose is taking our team. Like, you know, he's building that foundation. He, you can tell that there's been a foundation set for this, fran <clears throat> this franchise. There's, you know, there's a plan in place. Like, after listening to him today, I feel even more confident than I did when he got hired that he does have a plan in place. Now, is that plan going to work? Is it going to succeed? Are we going to be successful with the plan? That's, you know, that's something that we have to see moving forward. But do I like the fact that we I have a GM that I feel confident in? Yes, I feel confident in GM polls because I like the fact that this man is open with telling us, the fans, the media, anybody, the plan. Like, he's telling us what he's planning to do. He's telling us, hey, look, we're going to be selective in free agency. He's been consistent with that since last year. Like, one thing that we've talked about is the Bears having double the most cap space of any team in the NFL. Just because we have the most cap space does not mean that we're going to go crazy spending money in free agency. So I hope Bears Nation... Be prepared for that. I said that before the season started. I said that during the season. Do not think just because we have the most cap space in the league by leaps and bounds that Brian Poe is just going to be out here throwing money around. It's not happening because that's not part of his plan. It's not part of his setup. So at the end of the day, don't expect that. He's going to be selective in free agency. He's going to bring in long-term solutions to problems. That's basically what what's a part of his plan. He's going to build through the draft. He talked about that a little bit today. Something else that he's been consistent with since day one he got here. Building through the draft. Building sustained success. He, he said that word again. Sustained success. That's what he's doing. That's what he's trying to do. He talked about, you know, the elephant in the room of what it would take for him to draft a quarterback at number one. He would have to be blown away. Like, he has to be blown away by an offer or blown away by a player to take a quarterback at number one. That pretty much guarantees that Justin Fields is the guy. Like, we all pretty much know that Justin Fields was going to be our franchise quarterback. We all know that. But for all the, you know, national media members and all the goofies on social media, on Twitter, parading around with this trade Justin Fields narrative, GM Post shut that down. Some people are acting like he didn't shut it down. He did shut that down. Like, he shut that down. Um, by saying it would take a, uh, excuse me one second, guys. So, sorry about that. For him to say it would take a, you know, he has to be blown away to take a quarterback at one. 
tells you how much he feels about Justin Fields. He also talked a little bit about David Montgomery, how he likes David Montgomery, Montgomery, and how he wants to keep David Montgomery here, but it has to be at the right price, which is what it should be as a GM. Like, I'm a huge fan of David Montgomery. If David Montgomery comes back, I'm happy because I think David Montgomery on this team is an asset. If David leaves, it would suck, but I would understand that as well because we know how the running back position is in today's day and age. Running backs, it's sad to say it like this, but run, running backs, the running back position now has become a dime a dozen. Like you can find a starting level running back in the fourth, fifth, sixth round nowadays. And that's crazy to say that, but it, it happens. So if, if David doesn't come back, that's fine. Like, um, but I think, to me, in my opinion, what I believe, I believe that they will find a common ground and a common number where David's not going to break the bank, but he'll be back here. So in my personal belief, I think David Montgomery comes back. Uh, he talked about the free agent signings that he did sign this past offseason, you know, and their commitment to, you know, to the team and continuity and the atmosphere, which is key things. Like, bringing in the right type of people in your locker room and building chemistry and continuity, that is a huge deal. And, yeah, we could look at guys like Riley Reeve or we can look at guys like Equinamia St. Brown, Dante Pettis, that didn't produce the way we wanted them to produce on the field, which is the most important thing, obviously, is producing on the field. But at the same time, the same token, they are good character guys in the locker room. They're guys that help, you know, build chemistry. They're guys in the locker room that, you know, create the type of atmosphere that you want in a locker room. So kudos to those guys for that. Um, it is what it is. So overall, I like the plan that I heard and what I heard from Coach Flus as well about how they're going to attack this offseason. So I'm just looking forward to seeing, you know, everything unfold. Now, to the, uh, the all the social media trade Justin Fields and the Mike Tannenbaum stuff. That's what mainly everybody that's watching or anybody watching the video wanted me to talk about. What Mike Tannenbaum said does make sense in this one regard. Like I said earlier, there's a caveat to it. What he says makes sense in this regard okay if you believe that Bryce Young is a generational talent like if you believe that Bryce Young is the next Hall of Fame guy then what Mike Tannenbaum is saying makes sense if you believe that now my personal belief I watched a lot of Bryce Young because I, you know, I watch college tape. I watch a lot of college games and college tape because I like to see the new prospects that's coming in the draft for, for the Chicago Bears. I watched a lot of Bryce Young. I like Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young is going to be a really good quarterback. Bryce Young is not a generational talent. He's not a generational talent. He's not better than Justin Fields. And this is not me as a Bears fan just tooting, you know, tooting up my own horn or, you know, pushing my own quarterback or being biased because Justin Fields is our quarterback. No, I compared what Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud did in college to Justin Fields' college tape. Not, his, not any of his tape in the pros, just Justin Fields' college tape. If you watch Justin Fields' college tape and you watch C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, you would see that Justin Fields' is head and shoulders is better than them. He's head and shoulders better than them. If you watch just the college tape, like if Justin Fields came out in this year's draft, he will be the number one overall pick, unquestioned. Because Justin Fields is a better player. He has the size, he has the speed, and he has the arm that is necessary in today's NFL. 
Like, like I said, I like Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young will be good in the right situation. But my issues with Bryce Young is the size. He's about 5'11", 6 feet. He's about between 180, 190 pounds. And he runs about a 4'5". To be that small and run a 4'5", is a negative to me because that means you don't have the the athleticism or the strength to you know break ta you know break tackles and you don't have this the speed necessary in today's NFL to get past guys like the one thing that we did that we noticed in college and in the pros with Justin Fields is Justin Fields 63 220 Justin Fields is breaking tackles. Like, an arm tackle is not stopping Justin Fields. Uh, you know, an arm tackle is not going to throw him off like that. Bryce Young, yeah. If you watch Bryce Young, at 5'11", 6 feet, 180, 190 pounds, if one of those pro defensive ends get an arm tackle on him, they taking him to the ground. He doesn't have the speed and he doesn't have the size to take the wear and tear that, you know, NFL quarterbacks in today's day and age would take. My second thing with Bryce Young, as far as a negative, is the arm. He has a good arm. He doesn't have a great arm. Um, and he struggles with the middle of the field but that goes once again back to the size being six feet being you know it's hard for him to see over his offensive lineman so he struggles at time as at times with the intermediate and middle of the field routes like the deep ball he has a great deep ball he can throw the ball deep you know he can make those you know off script throws down the field he can do that but when you're talking about dropping back and hitting those plays in the middle of the field, he struggles at times with that because of the size. So those are my two drawbacks when it comes to Bryce Young, which hints, hints the reason why I say he's not a generational talent, which goes to the point of why Mike Tannenbaum's scenario or outline doesn't work. Like the only, like I said earlier, the only way that Mike Tannenbaum's outline works is if Bryce Young was a generational talent. He's not a generational talent. He's going to be a good player in the right situation, but he's not going to be a generational talent. Period. So you don't trade Justin Fields to bring in Bryce Young. That's not that's not what you do. You know. On top of the fact, you would get more compensation for the number one pick than you would get for Justin Fields. Because at the end of the day, it's about what what's making this team as a whole better. Not you know, not just one position. And the Bears have too many needs to say, hey, we're gonna trade Justin Fields and draft Bryce Young. Now, like I said, I understand where Mike Tannenbaum is coming from as far as his this this plan that he has because he's looking at it from a number standpoint what do i mean by numbers he's looking at it like this in today's nfl if you're a franchise and you have a quarterback on a rookie deal that's the franchise guy you want to win a super bowl during his rookie deal so you want to put as many pieces as you can together to make a run at a super bowl during your during the rookie contract of your franchise quarterback because you want to do it before you have to pay him that's the new NFL. So the way Mike Tannenbaum is looking at this is this. He's looking at it like if you draft Bryce Young and trade Justin Fields, you can get pieces that can, you know, help him as well as how the money and free agency that you can get to help him on both sides of the ball. Plus, it resets your your quarterback timeline because now you have a rookie quarterback going into his first year instead of having a quarterback going into his third year of his rookie deal. So it gives you more time to build a team 
to win a Super Bowl. That's the way he's looking at it. That's why I mean when I say numbers. He's just looking at it from a numbers base. If we trade Justin Fields and get Bryce Young, it resets the timeline as far as your quarterback. So now you you know your timeline for a Super Bowl is longer. So like I said, I get that. But once again, for his scenario, his plan, his outline to work, you're banking on the fact that, you know, Bryce Young is a generational talent. You got, like for his, for that to work, Bryce Young has to be a, a generational talent. He's not. So because he's not, and because even Mike Tannenbaum himself also said that Justin Fields can be a, a, a superstar caliber quarterback and a top 10 quarterback, why would you trade a guy who has the potential to be a top 10 guy and superstar caliber quarterback for a guy that may be a generational talent, may be, and set yourself back it, it does you know it, it it makes sense what he's saying if you believe bryce young is going to be a generational guy but but it doesn't make sense because no one really believes that bryce young is going to be a generational guy like bryce young best case hall of fame scenario is he's drew Brees. best case scenario he's drew Brees. If he's not Drew Brees, like Drew Brees is the one outlier. Drew Brees is the one quarterback that you look at that was a shorter quarterback that made it work like that, who became a Hall of Famer like that. It was Drew Brees. Outside of Drew Brees, you don't, the smaller 5'11", 6 foot, 180, 190 pound quarterbacks don't really work out that well in the NFL, especially in today's NFL. So, I'm sorry. I'm not banking on, you know, Bryce Young becoming the outlier when I know what I have in Justin Fields. Period. But um, it is what it is. We're going to, you know, watch for the next couple months and see what moves are going to be made. And I'm just excited to see what GM Pose does. So... It is what it is. Please comment on the video. I want to hear everybody's input. I want to hear y'all thoughts. And I'm going to definitely be uh, having a bunch of mock drafts. So be ready and be prepared, man, because um, this is going to be a nice, long offseason and an exciting offseason for our Chicago Bears. So uh, peace to you. Let's get it. Bear down.